It's Richie's birthday today, so I'm going to let him play the piano while I preach. <laughs> oh, man. Now, I just feel like sometimes when I talk, like, and I listen back to it, even on the YouTube videos or when someone records, it just sounds very empty, like a class. And I'm like, this doesn't need to feel like school. Like, you guys already go through that. So, like, what does it look like to have a little bit of just background kind of elevator-ish music? Just don't play something off the cuff. Yeah, I got you. You know? Starts playing like Drake on the piano. <laughs> so, how are you guys doing tonight? Okay. Not going to make you say it a thousand times. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, so, obviously, you know, last week, we talked about, uh, and I guess this will be kind of a little bit engaging. Uh, does anyone remember what we spoke about last week? I'll give you a hint. It was the condition of something. Heart. Yeah. It was the condition of the heart. And does anybody know what we said we were going to kind of like cycle through, right? It was like heart. What else were we going to talk about? Heart. Mind. And then there's no thing for soul. Like, like there's no hand sign I can do for that. Um, I've been doing crazy, crazy sit down, like, research with Mariano of figuring it out and I'm like I'm like dang this is extensive so I really hope I don't lose anybody today I'm trying my best I, and I know you guys are you know very very smart so I won't lose you but like even when I was talking to him about it I was like bro <laughs> I feel like I was in you ever see the meme of it was like when you meet someone who gets you and it's two people and it's like space in their head and it's like that's what it felt like it felt like we were in space just like I was like this is this is a lot like and so I'm, I'm excited to talk about this, and, and if you're taking notes, and, and please have, you know, if you, notepad or phone or whatever you guys have out, uh, the title of my message today is uh, The Condition of the Mind. The Condition of the Mind. And so what do we think is the difference between, right, heart and mind? Because we're going to, like I said, we're going to go through some things. And for the third week, we're going to talk about the spirit, not necessarily the soul. Because doing further research, we found out that the soul is just your heart. I mean, your heart and your mind and your will together. So we're going to talk about spirit. And I touched a little bit on that while I was praying for us. So what do you guys think is the difference between, like, heart and mind? Anybody know? Your heart. Your, one of you, Isabella, you want to go? Mind's more logical, right? And what, what about the heart? What? Feelings, yeah. So it's, it's, it's almost like your heart is feelings and your mind is like, you know, more thought-based, more thinking, right? That's why oftentimes people say, yeah, I got to be careful with how I feel and operate on what I think and what I know. But the reality is, again, they're both very important. The heart is important. The mind is important, right? It's not, less, it's not more of like, let me throw my heart away and just use my head. No, that, that doesn't work too, right? Because they affect each other. Sometimes the way I feel affects the way I think. But sometimes the way I'm thinking affects the way I feel. And I'm going to go into these points, and I don't want to jump, any, uh, jump, you know, advance or, or go too fast into point one without sharing the things. But, uh, you know, the biggest thing, and, and I even read it to you guys in worship, uh, that was kind of highlighting this idea of loving God with everything and kind of breaking it down was found in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. And if we could put it up there on the little Sky Bible, awesome. Thank you so much for Eric. Can we give Eric a round of applause? He's been doing such a great job in slides. And, and the thing, like I say all the time, even about Nick Tech guys, you'll never know that they're there. But if they weren't there, you surely would know something was off. You're like, the service feels off, like weird, like there's something missing. It's probably the tech team, not the Holy Spirit. And verse 37 says, and I read it, and I'm read again. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your, what? And with all your, and with all your, right. And so it's this idea of I've got to love God with everything. I can't hold anything back. And even when we go back to, Matthew chapter 15 and you know you guys remember when I and I didn't uh, put that up there I don't think but we talked about the story with the Pharisees right where Jesus was like from you know what go comes out of you says a lot about what yeah what's going on inside of you right so what's coming out of my mouth says a lot about what's going on in my heart and we talked a lot about this idea I'm not going to go back and again if you want to rewatch that or you missed last week it's up on our YouTube channel Praise the Lord. I love that. We can do that now. 
before it just be lost in space and you just never get it again. <laughs> like, But in verse, I believe it's 18, it says, but the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart and these defile them. And it says, for out of the heart come evil thoughts. And so again, it further stretches this idea of there's a relationship between my heart and my mind, right? But there was a great guy uh, who I've been following lately. He's a theologian and he's super great. And he said, he, he quoted C.S. Lewis. He said, the heart never takes the place of the head, but it can and should obey it. You guys should write it down because that's mega good. C.S. Lewis was a beast, still is. He's not even alive anymore. The heart never takes the place of the head, but it can and should obey it, right? But I do want to go into detail, right? Because I, the Bible, and we're going to talk about this, does talk about not just guarding your heart, but guarding your mind, right? And so, again, it, there is this idea of, like, if my mind, if God's not in my head, if God's not in my mind as well, then my mind could probably lead me to some weird places as well. And so we're going to start this off with Romans chapter 12. And this, there's a lot of Bible verses in the sermon today, so be prepared to be flipping back and forth in your phone or your regular Bibles or whatever it is that you have. And uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2 says, uh, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that uh, what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so this passage was written by Paul, obviously to Rome, and Rome was Walla now, and so he sent them a lot of letters of like, yo, yeah, Walla, chill out, like this is what the Bible says. And so going through this passage, we, we have to understand, because there's some strong words, like offer my body as a living sacrifice. What does that mean? I'd, like throw myself out the window and say, I'm yours, Jesus, or something? Like I have to jump into a fire? No, no, right? We know the Bible uses a lot of hyperboles, and all that means is it's sometimes not really what the person meant, but it's a metaphor for something else. So he's saying that true and proper worship is offering my life as a sacrifice to him. Bringing it back, he's basically saying, I have to give God my all. I have to give, not hold a single thing back. I have to give him my heart. I have to give him my mind. I have to give him my thoughts. I have to give him this body. He has to take back everything because I can't do this thing called life on my own. And then he says this really interesting part. He says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For my first point, uh, I have here, our mind and thoughts hold power. I'll give you time to write that down while I take a sip of water. Where are my overthinkers out here tonight? Oh, can I have any? Wow, I'm not alone. Amen. Come on. That's good. Yeah, I'm one of those guys. My mind can like run ultra rampant. Like, oftentimes when I get nervous or anxious, it's not even because I just felt nervous or anxious. I walked in and I'm like, oh, that's going to be scary. Oh, this is going to be weird. Oh, there's a lot of people here today. Oh, what if I don't forget? What if I forget a certain part of the message? Or what if I forget what I'm actually going to have to preach, you know, on? Like, it all just slips my mind. And then before I know it, I spiral into this place of being so anxious, right? Into this place of being like, oh, my God, I can't do this. I can't do this, right? And it's funny because, like I said before, sometimes our minds can also influence our heart. We talked about last week of like, yeah, we know that what comes out of our mouth says a lot about what's going on in here. But we also talked about the fact that sometimes I can feel something and not say anything about it. it just stays in my mind. just stays in my head. Right? Like some person says hello to me the wrong way. I'm like, were they mad at me? Like, were they upset about, like, like, what did I do? And then I create this, I don't know if anyone does, create this whole problem, the situation that doesn't even exist. And they're out here, like, chilling. Like, in their head, it's just like, do, 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 do. Like, it's the seals dancing around in the water. <laughs> and so we understand that, you know, our mind is a very powerful thing, that our minds 
can oftentimes put us in crazy places. I remember uh, when I first started talking to Liz, when we like first, first started talking, uh, we, you know, we're texting back and forth and it's the beginning of a relationship and I don't know how many of you guys went through this where it's like the text game is like, why didn't she text me back? Like, you know, I just sent a text, what, what's going on? And, you know, little would I know later on that, you know, she was just playing hard to get on purpose and, you know, <laughs> ladies, make them guys chase you, all right? I don't care what anybody said in any relationship panel before, make that guy chase you. And so... <laughs> And so, like, I remember I was working at Zara at the time, and I was just like, I would think this thought. I would look at the text, and I'd be like, why didn't she text me back? Yo, it's been like four or five hours. Is she talking to another person? Is she doing this? Like, did she forget about me? And then I'm spiraling down this whole place. Now I'm feeling nervous. Now I'm feeling afraid and all this stuff. And then she texts me back a simple text with emojis and responds, and I'm like, okay, we're back. We're back together, right? But again, my mind, my thoughts had so much power to literally shift the way I was feeling, the way I was acting, the way I was moving, right? And now in the relationship, like we will go like a while, like hours without texting, but I'm like, oh, she's probably working on this. She's probably working on that because I know her. But it's not in this uncontrolled place anymore. A, a great analogy I could use, and um, I, I, when I used to go to Nyack College, there was this guy, and he used to say, and I'm going to use this verse a little bit later on when we talk about uh, Romans and, and some of the other stuff in the New Testament. He talked about this idea of taking every thought captive, right? And it's biblical, and we're going to talk about it. So take every thought captive. And he, he gave me this kind of illustration where he was like, every time I have a thought that's like mine or, or whatever, like he was like, it's almost like there's a paint that just hits against the wall, this blank canvas and he was like and then another thought another paint another paint another paint and he was like and if I don't if I'm not careful to make sure that God's not checking up on that if I'm not careful to make sure God's you know almost whiting the wall back for me I can leave and come back and it's a whole picture there now and so what started off as something small became something big because I left it go unchecked and I think like we said before last week we live in this information age right where there's so many stuff that's literally coming at you you're not even looking for it it's looking for you it's like these related searches were writing your names on google like but it starts off as as one thing and then i i believed the lie right and i left it there and i was like ah oh, it's, it's just there it's just there and before I know it, it went unchecked and it became this ugly monster wearing this mask of truth and I just left it there. I, I love people like, you know, Isabella Fraga. I literally wrote your name on my iPad. Who comes to our small groups with such the hard-hitting questions, the existential crisis questions. Because it's like, there's this understanding that it's there and she's not just going to leave it on, in, on the inside of her and just be like, okay, well, I'm just going to figure this out someday. She's like, no, I, I, I want to pass this to someone. And I think the problem is oftentimes we're not like Isabella. And so we try to deal with all our thoughts and everything that festers on our own. Can I tell you that you are not meant to try to deal with your own thoughts on your own? You're not called to just have all these ideas and all this stuff going on in your head and just be like, well, it's going to get better someday. <laughs> Our thoughts hold power. And it's why well, I'm glad that we have, you know, the leadership here and the small groups here. And we're going to go into that idea in the second point. Because if it's not checked, it's, it's what we see in the world where someone can once be a, a, good, Christ, a, a good Christian, quote unquote, and, and all that, and then something happens and a thought festers and something happens and then all of a sudden they walk away from the faith. And the craziest part is even if we're struggling with it, even if we don't get it, this book is still true. It's one of the most historically reliable books ever. And so just because I'm struggling doesn't mean this is no longer real, no longer fact. It doesn't mean God just disappeared from the heavens because, oh, oh man, he found out. He asked the wrong question. God just fades out of heaven. Like, it doesn't happen that way. I have to learn to adjust. What's that saying? It's like facts doesn't care about our opinions or our feelings, something like that. They don't care about our feelings, right? 
And so I want to talk about this today because I think for a lot of us, we have good questions that we're afraid to ask. But because we're trying to do it on our own and it's festering in our head, it's becoming something much, much uglier and we're not even looking out for help. That's why I love the example of Isabella because she'll just be like, dude, I've just been thinking about revelation and heaven and hell and, and this. And I'm like, good, let me get in the Bible and get you some answers. <laughs> and she challenges our whole leadership team. Any girl will tell you that, right? We're not supposed to run away from these questions. We're not supposed to run away from these thoughts. My second point, if we can put it up there. Be careful, though, of who you let into your headspace. <laughs> I hate you guys. No, I'm kidding. I love you guys so much. I try my best not to smile when I hear that. Sorry. Be careful of who you let into your headspace. So now you know how powerful your mind is. You know what it can do. You know it can mess with your heart. You know, because we know when we have certain things that are festered and we don't deal with it the right way, eventually they lead to unprecedented actions. And so what was once a little thought that I left there for too long led to me doing something I wish I never had done or I shouldn't have done or made me act brand new. So my question even right now is, well, who has access to your mind? I'll give you guys a second to think about that or write it down or whatever. Well, who has access to your mind? I'm going to take another sip. Because it's one thing that someone has access to your heart. But when they have access to your heart and your mind, that's a deadly combo. And sadly enough, I think oftentimes we rather give our heart and our mind to a person than to God. And I've seen some of the most amazing guys and girls and, and people who are after God's own heart give their heart and mind to the wrong person. And what would happen is that they would think, they would start to believe what that person believed. They would start to think what that person think. And the saddest part in situations like that is someone also have you thinking their reality is your own. They'll have you thinking, I mean, I've seen it so many times, whether it's in churches or, or whatever, they'll be like, oh, they don't like us. They don't love us. And the girl's like, yeah. Or the guy's like, yeah, that's true. And I'm out here on the back line saying, bro, no one just likes this person or, or your situation is not the same or this or that. And I'm watching from the backside, and then I watch as these two people just literally walk happily into destruction until it's crazy messy, and they're like, what the heck am I doing? My question is, again, who are you letting into your headspace? Because can I challenge you with this? Again, not every thought is your thought. Not everything that's in your head is you, but sometimes it could be other people. Can I scare you a little bit? Maybe it won't scare you. We're pretty mature. Even demons can whisper in your ear and put thoughts in your head. You don't want to believe me? Look at the garden. Let's go all the way back to Genesis. Let's go all the way back to Genesis. Adam and Eve walking out, living their best life in the garden. A snake comes out. And man, this is gonna, this is gonna be amazing. You guys are gonna like this. Snake comes and, and he whispers to them and he's like, you know, if you eat this fruit, right? He's talking to Eve. If you eat this fruit, you're just going to be, you're going to be just like God. You're going to know the difference between good and evil. You're going to have this. You're going to have that. Notice the devil can't make her do anything. Because <laughs> when you're under God's protection, the enemy can only whisper to you. He can only plant thoughts into you. He can only whisper lies to you. And so he tells Eve, hey, why don't, why don't you go grab that apple? And so she finally gets tempted to do so. She finally grabs it and eats it and shares it with Adam. And I can literally imagine him trying to sneak himself away. Because what, one thing I know, especially about when we talk about spirit, spirituality and demons and stuff like that, they don't want to receive all this recognition. They don't want to receive this praise. They want to keep crushing people from the, bless you, they want to keep crushing people from the shadows. 
They want to put people on pedestals, then rip it out beneath them and go. And it's funny, God sees it all. Obviously, that would lead to the fall of man and why Jesus needs to come and all that stuff. And he curses the snake too, right after them. And I literally imagine him trying to like sneak away. And God's like, wait, I see you too. You're getting papa as well. But I need you to understand the devil doesn't care about you. And so he's just like, look, I'm going to throw all these thoughts and hope that person's life just gets wrecked. I'm going to keep whispering these things. Man, I, I looked up so many throughout this week, so many documentaries, so many. I looked up so much stuff. My head feels like it's about to explode. And I looked into people who would, you know, who would struggle uh, deeply with, with suicide and, and all this stuff. And, and oftentimes it was like they kept hearing a voice that said, take your life, hurt this person, do this, do that. Man, that sounds a lot like the guy who comes around trying to kill, steal, and destroy it. But we'll, we'll make it very practical. <laughs> we'll make it very, very practical. Oh, I'm, I'm just feeling things. Oh, I just saw this. I saw that. He doesn't care if you think it's him or not. He just wants you to do it. He just wants to wreck you. He doesn't want the fame. He just wants to destroy you. Because he knows that the minute, and he saw it, the minute Jesus gave his life on Calvary, on the cross, that it was done. He's defeated. So this is a downhill battle for him. But he wants to take as many of us as he can before that time comes. But like I said even before, I, I'm glad no matter where we're at or what our week looked like, like, man, God's love will bring us back each and every time. Again, don't care what your last two weeks were like. I don't care if the month was hard and you went back to that thing or you struggled with this again or that. Like, what I care is that at some point we say that's enough. That at some point we choose into Jesus and we say, God, I, I don't just want to give you my heart. I want to give you my mind. Or I just don't want to give you my mind. I want to give you my heart and I want to give you all of me. For my third point. Don't exchange the truth for a lie. I'm going to say it again. Don't exchange the truth for a lie and even in Romans it talks about this idea of let God be true let every man be a liar right and I'm going to read through Romans and it's a, it's, a, it's a harder verse it's a harder passage that I'm going to read but I think we need to right because I, I don't does anyone want to be babied here or show of hands anyone wants to be babied and I think in doing that, we have to under, continue to understand and renew our minds and fill our thoughts with God thoughts, right? With truth. Because we live in a world where people want to tell you, well, if you're a good person, you could do what you want and you're going to go to heaven. And it's like, what is our definition of good even? What is it based on? Because mine is God. To me, good is God, Right? But we live in a time where, again, people will feed you so much false information, so much stuff, make you think that you can do this and you can do that and you can, you can mess a little with this or you could do a little bit of that. And, but my Bible says something different. And so even one of the coolest things that I, when me and Mariano speak, we learn to get into this understanding of I'm wrong, but what's in here is true. And can I tell you, even being here, I don't always have it all right. There's certain stuff that I learned growing up in church and I came here and did heavy studies and I'm like, wow, that's not even in the Bible. I think follow your heart is in the Bible. No, but it sounds cute. It's like, you know, you put it in the movies and you, you're like, follow your heart, Billy. It's like, I love you. Just keep going. <laughs> For some reason, he's a country guy. <laughs> follow your heart, live your truth. But then we go back to the Bible and we're like, wow, those, all those sound cute, but none of them are in the Bible. And we have to be so, so careful with that because I, 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 and I think I said this before, I wish there was a part two to a lot of these movies where you see what their life looks like six, seven years down the line and what marriage actually looked like in a real way. <laughs> because that's what no one sees. But that's what we think that's sometimes what this our generation is being taught we're being taught that 
faster is better. We're not being taught that sacrifice leads to better. We're not taught that even, uh, we've been going to the, a uh, few of us, going to this guy, Dave Ramsey, who's teaching financial peace. He's an awesome guy. And uh, it's funny because it, it doesn't even feel like financial peace. It feels like a premarital session. Like, <laughs> you just see a bunch of couples who are just, I'm ready to get married. Like, um, and one of the cool things that he was basically showing and talk about his idea is like, I'm going to live now like no one else would to be able to give later like no one else can. But in this generation, we don't, we don't want to do that. We don't want to give up our minds. Because then that means maybe I might have to actually now start listening to God. Maybe that thing that he asked me to do, I have to stop making excuses as to why I can't do it. Maybe that thing that I'm feeling in my heart, I can't listen to it anymore because I know that that's not God, that's me. But if we would do it now, what our lives would look like, what we would be able to uh, reap two, three years later, how we'd be able to give, not just financially in our case, but from ourselves and spiritual things that we might have gone through or moments we might have had with God. And so I want to read Romans chapter 1, verse 18 through 24. I'm going to take a sip real quick. So this, and, and I, funny enough, this was my original kind of opening passage that I had, and I felt God say, leave it to the end, because uh, Romans is a very heavy book. And, and so verse 18 goes, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the uh, godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. And this passage is going to preach to you by itself. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power his div and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Verse 21, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but, think it, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were dark. In verse 22, although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. And exchange the glory of the immortal God for images, images made to look like mortal human beings and birds and animals and reptiles as that sound like what we see today. Therefore, God gave them over and the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurities for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. What I love is a book written 2,000 plus years ago and yet still relevant today. It's still relevant today. It's not this outdated. It's not this, sure, we need to understand context. Sure, we need to understand historic background because and, and, we can't just take things out of context. But it applies today because it talks about the sinful nature of man and man trying to play God and do life without God. And, and that hit me so hard. They traded the truth for a lie. Because sometimes believing that lie is more comfortable. Believing what that other person is more comfortable. Accountability is a little bit difficult, but it's what God calls us into. And so we call rise. I want to gear towards the end of this message. So I want to go through the points one more time just in case someone forgot it or you want to just take a mental note. But again, the first point was our thoughts hold power. So 
So what you think, what you let fester, it holds weight. I promise you there's no place you can just hide it or put it under a bed somewhere in your mind that it's just going to be just going to vanish like I think it was Sabrina once told me and worship team you can come up um, just because you bury it doesn't mean it's dead just because you put it in a closet somewhere in your head doesn't mean it's gone it's still there and I pray that we'd be a people who aren't afraid to share our thoughts not just with God but but with the leaders with the right people because man you could share your thoughts with who you might be comfortable with and and that's okay in that one friend or whatever but they might not be able to give you the godly advice that you need right like it might be more comfortable for me to share something you know with with one of my my good friends but i don't know if they give me the right counsel that maybe Ange would and maybe pastor nick would And so we have to be careful with this idea of what we're allowing in our minds and what we're allowing to stick there. Um, secondly, again, be careful of who you let into your headspace. Because not every voice in your head is yours. I remember one time I had a conversation with one of my old friends and it was about church. It was about, uh, I think it was about worship music. I don't know what it was, but I was like, like, I was, like, saying, hey, why aren't you doing this? Why, like, like what's, you know, what's going on? And just checking up on her. She's, like, my little sister. And she was telling me all this stuff. And halfway through the, the conversation, she's just, like, you know what? Let me stop. I don't even think that. Like, this person is talking through me right now. And I was, like, whoa. Like, that was a cool moment. I'm, like, I'm glad that you, you know, had that. And, and listen, guys, you all know what it's like to have that close best friend and they have that toxic ex, and you're like, dude, you need to stay away, and then they go back to it, and you're just like, I'm gonna kill you. Like, <laughs> everyone knows what that feeling is like. Again, surround your people, surround yourself with people who are gonna challenge you, people who have been there for you since day one. I talked about it even with relationship goals, where I was like saying how I had these, you know, rose colored glasses, and I had people, you know, like Ange and Luciano, and people who were just like, there for me and trying to speak over me but I was so blind like share your thoughts with the right people share your heart with the right people and lastly again don't exchange the truth for a lie Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 through 3 and that's going to be the last passage I kind of read before we end things says since then you have been raised with christ set your hearts on things above where christ is seated at the right hand of god set your minds on things above not earthly things for you died and your life is now hidden with christ in god if we can bow our heads and close our eyes and if we get like two girl leaders two guy leaders over here if i could just get Liz and Gabby is fine. And for guys, just do uh, Mark and Jason. So we could bow again, bow our heads and close our eyes on. And so, so we know the condition of the heart now. And we knew, and now today we understand the condition of the mind and we understand both of them need to be surrendered to God. Because I, I understand that I, I, and we're going to go into this in the third week where we're going to talk about our spirit. I, I want to be someone who doesn't just go by what I feel or what I think, but what I know God is speaking to me. And so my prayer for tonight is that there's anybody who's like, yeah, I'm in a place where my thoughts have been going off the wall. My mind has just been off the wall. Or even my heart's been like off the wall. And I, I know I can't just keep it in anymore. Then I, I encourage you, guy with guy, girl with girl, would you go, come up to one of our leaders and, and, and talk with them and share, share your heart, share your mind. I promise you these are people you can trust you're not going to end up seeing whatever you're going through on the new york times tomorrow like 
No, they're very secretive, not secretive, discreet, but um, my encouragement is that you'd go up to one of these leaders, that you would pray with them, that you would talk with them, and, and that you would share what's going on, and that they'd be able to pray for you and over you. Like I said, we, we don't just want to be this once a week thing for you where we help you up on your feet and then not prepare you for what next week looks like. These people want to pray with you and prepare you for things to come in the next weeks. Because what I understand, if we be real and I can be really honest with you, the devil's always waiting for you outside those doors. He's not welcome here, so he can't, he can't stay. The name of Jesus is too scary to him. Once you go out those doors, it's a free game. Now we want to prepare you for that. We don't just want this to be this once a week thing. And so I'm going to pray for us for real, for real. And then again, if you need prayer, I want you to go up to one of the leaders. Lord, I thank you, God, for your message. Lord, I thank you uh, that you always speak so clear, God. And Lord, that, Lord, you speak so directly to people and I don't know half the problems or situations of, of literally anything or anyone, yet I always, after service, have someone who comes up and be like, you don't know I was going through this. And I'm like, bro, that was just God. And Lord, you, you know what you're doing. Lord, you always know what you're doing, God. And I pray that um, every single heart here wouldn't leave the same. Jesus, that everyone here would know that you care enough about them to bring things into the light. But we have to care enough about ourselves to want to give you those things, God. And so, Lord, I pray for anyone who this message might have touched and who just needs prayer. Lord, and I pray that they'd be brave enough to just go up to one of our leaders and just ask for prayer. Lord, because this is a community. We're here for one another, and we're here for your name's sake. And so, Lord, I thank you for what you've done tonight, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. And we all say amen. All right, I'm going to move aside. Like I said, prayer guys over here. <laughs>